Welcome back to Postcards from St. Petersburg. This week we're climbing up Mountain El Brus, the uh, highest mountain in Europe. Last night I flew down to Mineral Water, uh, which is an airport not far from the Caucasian mountains in the south of Russia. Uh, the first uh, hill that we can see is this, this little one behind me. Uh, I've just stayed overnight in a hotel here and I'm waiting at lunchtime for a van to come and pick me up to take me down to Turskol, from where we'll be starting eight days of, of walking, gradually acclimatizing and getting up towards Mount Elbrus. So we've arrived at Tierskol. It's a beautiful little town. We had some uh, local food, uh, some, um, they're not pancakes. I'll find out the proper name of them later and tell you. They're not Pelini. Uh, and some um, sopa, which is very tasty. And um, we've gone for little acclimatization walks. So we've been up in the woods a little bit, uh, just walking, not to acclimatization, just kind of warming up, getting used to the thing. But it's lovely weather and uh, I'm very excited about the coming days. We've come to the bottom of the Poljana Narzani hill and we've just tasted, I'll show you it, the Narzani mineral water uh, which comes down here and is meant to be very healing so I should be quite healthy now. It's now the morning of day two. I'm already feeling more refreshed to be out of the city. Uh, after yesterday's short walk, uh, we went to the restaurant. I had um, Balkarskian uh, meat, which is the local dish. Uh, it's uh, meat on the bone with its uh, bullion served by the side. Incredibly tasty meat, very nice. Um, we then did a, a inspection of our kit with, I, I should tell you the group who's, uh, who I'm with, I'm with a group called Crazy Travel, which is a gentleman called Andre, very, very impressed by their level of uh, attention at the start, very reasonably priced, it was um, in, in rubles, uh, 50,000 rubles in, in pounds, around 500 pounds for the, uh, the nine day trip, all inclusive. And so they did a, a, a check of the kit. We laid out all our kit. They showed us the things that we need to hire whilst we're here, crampons and ice axes and, well, for me, quite a bit of stuff. Uh, and, and the things that we need to buy, like even suntan cream. So they're, they're taking care of me. Um, and yeah, it all looks very good. Today's going to be the acclimatization. So we're actually going up to Chiget, which is 2,750 meters. Uh, we've we just walked for about 20 minutes, taking a, a quick stop. Uh, we're using the poles as we walk along and it's, it's very pretty. I don't know if you can see the mountains there behind me.
Well, we've come up 600 meters and there's a small mountain cafe here. Uh, so I've ordered the, the, the pancakes I was trying to tell you about the other day, they're hicini. So I've ordered some hicini smears and some uh, little pancakes with, uh, with meat uh, and uh, some coffee. Back on the hill again. I'm not sure how many kilometers necessary to burn off the Hitchin, but I'll find out. Just over three kilometers uh, of her, and uh, it looks nice. So it's taken us five hours to get up to up to three thousand four hundred and twenty three meters here, uh, and it's it's beautiful. We can see across to Georgia, over there, and uh, behind us is, is Russia. And so back down to base camp for Shashlik. It's day three of the trip to El Brus. Uh, we had a safe trip back down Cheget yesterday. It took us eight hours. Uh, altogether the whole trip uh, going down obviously was a lot faster particularly in the snow with the crampons it was uh, the, going up the snow with the crampons down was quite fun the, the stones going down I prefer going up but it was still nice this is um, this is the original hotel that was built in Cheget in this little uh, conurbation in the 1970s uh, I thought I'd share it for those lovers of the Soviet Union might like to see the pensionat Cheget that was used for, for officials would, uh, of, the, of the Communist Party would come down here and see something a little bit different. They were allowed to listen to Western music inside. There's a, a dance floor, uh, a discotheque level where they would play music by Kiss and bands like this. And the very top floor you can see just below the kind of concrete top is all open to the air. We had a lovely walk along in there yesterday. You get really beautiful views and look out at what you probably won't see with the sun, but the beautiful mountains on the other side. So that's not where we're staying, but I just thought I'd share Pantheon at Chiget, also because of the really cool font in which Chiget is written. I'm gonna take a coffee, have some breakfast. Today, day three, uh, we're taking it fairly easy because uh, we did our acclimatization yesterday with the height that we went to. So we're going to go across to visit a waterfall and have a look at that and just do some kind of gentle walking, kind of keep ourselves limbered up before the following day going up towards the um, ice base camp. I'll talk more about that tomorrow. So our third day is a peaceful day to go and see some waterfalls. Right now we're heading up towards the Girls' Braid waterfall. So guys, this behind me is the waterfall of the girls' braids, uh, giving a nice background noise. We've stopped for a little snack. I've got some partly melted chocolate, fudgy chocolate in my pocket, which is quite nice. And we're relaxing a little bit.
So we're heading back down the hill after visiting the waterfall. I decided not to climb, uh, strip off and climb into the waterfall for the flimsy excuse of not wanting to cut my feet before going up the, the mountain. When we get down, we're going to be renting out some more serious kit for going up the mountain, ice axes, things like that, which tomorrow we'll get a chance to play with. So day three is finished and tomorrow we'll be moving from the hotel up into the, uh, the ice um, camp up at the, the top. It's a building, you can, you can go inside, but there's, uh, there's no shower or bathroom and there's one outdoor toilet, which I'll show you when I'm there. I'm just enjoying one last of the 5,642 meter uh, local, local beers before heading up because at the higher altitude, it's better not to, not to drink too much alcohol. The, the base is at uh, 3,750 meters and we'll be going from there up to 4,100 meters to play with the ice axes a little bit and learn how to use those, how to do an arrest. So you stop at the fall using the ice axe and all those things, which hopefully I'll be able to catch some of them on video. Uh, but generally the first three days have, have been great. It's been lovely, gentle hiking, walking up in the hills. Uh, so we'll catch up tomorrow. So we're at the bottom of the cable car. We, there's a nice schematic here. Here you see it, uh, 2,350 meters, Azal, which is where we are now. We're heading up to uh, Stancia Mir. Uh, this is where the camp is, right? Uh, camp at We go up to. Aha. Uh -huh. We go up to here to the Bojki. There's 3,800 meters, and then obviously later we'll go up to the two peaks, which you see at the top there. 5,642 meters is the highest peak and 5,621 meters also is not too low. Uh, over there you see where we were yesterday, the, uh, the waterfall of the girl with the braids. I forgot to say tomorrow's destination is this uh, Skali Pastuchova here at uh, 4,700 meters. After today, ample rest, we get to go there tomorrow. of cable car. As you can see below, there's various folk out uh, skiing there. The snow looks pretty good for it. I've got uh, Ichiku Park by the small faces playing in my head. Oh, so we've made it up to the main camp. Breathing a little bit slower, but it's all good. And we're just heading off to the, the most important place, the kitchen. So we've got to the Nats Park base camp here. You see we've got this really nicely stocked kitchen, one of three three kitchens. I think we're, we're due to have a, uh, a cup of tea pretty soon. This is the local dog, Bess, who has been up to the summit 30 times already. But he's a little bit camera shy, so, so we'll leave him out in the vlog for now. We just got out and used the ice axes to uh, self arrest in case we fall down on the mountain. There's a very nice straightforward technique where you you kind of flip the thing up to your shoulders if it were a pistol and you fall down on it. A rifle, sorry, and fall down on it. It was lots of fun and we're back now to have dinner. So it's the end of day four. I thought I'd just share with you, this is our snug little uh, cabin here at the, uh, the winter base camp. Uh, I'm going to sleep now. Tomorrow we're going up to a place, that name I've forgotten, but I'll, I'll tell you tomorrow. Uh, all's going well, the energy's feeling great, uh, lovely company. Uh, great food and drink here, uh, so see you at day five. Guys, it's the morning of day five, we're setting off from camp. Uh, when we arrived, it was a little bit of a snowstorm, so we couldn't see very much. It looked beautiful, but we couldn't see the mountains in the background. But we woke to find that the storm had cleared and all of these wonderful mountains behind us. And so we're gonna head up to is you need a skulka Mietrov? Skulka, skulka We go up to 4,750 meters, I think, today, uh, and we're heading up this way. So the way we're walking now is called average pace. 
uh, because of the reduction of oxygen at this height, you can't just crack on up to the top. You go at a certain speed, which, uh, which means you, you adapt. Uh, and so we've got a nice comfortable pace walking up. It feels very pleasant. So we're coming now quite close to the bottom of Pastuhova. Uh, up to this point, there's a motorized vehicle. If you see behind me, this, uh, what's called in Russian, a, a rat track. I have no idea what it's called in English, a, a, a wheeled uh, snow vehicle, um, which means that obviously it makes it easier to, to go at the mountain if the conditions are a bit more difficult. Uh, and as you see behind me, the views, absolutely overwhelmingly beautiful. Sorry guys, I wasn't quite truthful there. So we're at 4,500 meters now, and this is where the track goes at this time of the year. But in the summer, it goes higher. Uh, it goes beyond the Pastahova rocks uh, to a bit higher there, where at an average pace, it takes uh, six hours from where it stops to get to the top, or go faster, maybe three, three, four hours. So we're taking our lunch break here up at 4,670 meters. Uh, that's the top of the Pastahova rockfall. I don't think we're going very much further up on this uh, acclimatisation day, uh, but it's been a, a lovely walk up here. Been incredibly lucky for May with the weather. Absolutely stunning, no wind, very perfect conditions for walking. So we've topped out our acclimatization here at 4, 000, just over 4,900 meters, uh, which leaves around 700 meters to the top. Um, but obviously, as you get closer to the top, the meters cost you more. Uh, so um, even though it's only 700 meters, it's not like running almost twice around a, a, a running track. And they're just absolutely stunning views. I'll switch the camera the other way and show you. And then we're going to head back down. Today's, tomorrow's a day of complete relaxation. So, so that sounds pretty good. <laughs> So it's the end of day five. Uh, the downhill was very easy going. Uh, we just, we went straight down and we'd got used by now to using the uh, koshkis, the, um, uh, what are they called, crampons uh, better. So it was, it was pretty easy going. So now we have a day of rest tomorrow. And then is the very, the most important day, which is the climb up El Bruce. Now, what I'm planning to do, what I'm hoping to do is to set off on the base camp and go up uh, both of the peaks of El Bruce, the highest peak and then the second peak. Now, to get the highest peak, we'll be setting off at around 11 o'clock tomorrow night. Uh, and it's it, in order to get there at about 9 a.m. That's the aim. Uh, there's then the chance to back out of the, the second peak, because obviously after 10 hours of walking through the dark and the cold, we have to see how we feel at that point. But then what I'd really like to do, and the guide's been absolutely wonderful. He's going one-on-one -on -one with me so I can uh, t tackle this, while another partner guide is going with it. There's only two of us that were on the, the course, again, by luck, because it could have been a much larger number of people. So by nine o'clock, I should be on the top of the first peak uh, and then hopefully go down and across to the other peak and then get back down again. I may not be taking much videoing on the, the way up because uh, I think we're going to be trying to go at a reasonable speed um, and th th there's a lot of things to think about. I'll try to, but certainly on each of the peaks, I'll try to take a shot. So let's see how it goes. But anyway, we've got a day of rest first. So tomorrow, maybe I'll, if I'm not just sleeping all day, I might show you a little bit around the camp. Okay guys, so it's day six, which is our day of rest. Most of the day I'm going to be spent laying around in bed reading, but I thought I'd just give you a quick tour of the base camp first. 
So behind you there is our, our kitchen. Uh, I'll make sure I've got some video material or photo material of the kitchen so I can intersplice that there. There's um, a couple of toilets that you can see over there, the grey building. Uh, I'll walk you down to see some more of what's there. You see behind me a group that's just getting ready to go go off to the top there. Probably not, not all the way up, but uh, part of the way up by the fact that they're setting off at, at this time. Our room from which I did the... Uh, the recording last night is just down here. There's kind of two cabins, each for four people. We've got four people in one of them. Myself, Masha, who's the other person who's traveling up at the time, she's going up on the rat track tomorrow. And our guide, um, Andre, and uh, our guide sister, uh, Aliona, who also is, is the chef. Here, next to the uh, snowman down there, you see the rather charming uh, original toilet of the camp, which is still used. Uh, just a single toilet down there. And generally you see the mountains. That's, uh, that's Georgia over there. Those, those mountains pretty much make up the, the border with, uh, with Georgia. Uh, and when we get up uh, El Bruce, this is El Bruce, by the way, behind me, these two, two summits. Uh, that's the highest summit, the one closer to me that probably looks smaller here, but that's the tallest, 5,642, I think. And the shortest one, which is 5,621, I think, is on the other side. So my hope tomorrow is to go up all the way to that one, back down into the valley and up to that one, and then back down. But on the other side, on the northern side of El Bruce, that's pretty much the end of the mountain range. So we should be able to see some greener uh, lands contrasting with the, the mountains that we're seeing here. So that's your tour of the camp. Probably the next time you'll see me will be tomorrow when we're heading on up. Like I said, I might not be able to take a lot of video footage on the way up because I'm really quite focused on making time. But I'm sure at the tea stops I could just say a word or two. So guys, we're down at Patahova Rocks now, which is um, only a couple of hours left going down, uh, and the storm is a lot, uh, a lot less. Uh, although it's still, it's still pretty windy. Um, I'm very. Here's the uh, the guy, Daniel. Uh, say hello. Daniel, do you want to say hello to the vlog? What's good? Oh, hello. How are you doing? Um, yeah. So you know, I'm very happy with the decision to go back. Interestingly, I've been reading a lot of books about Everest recently, particularly the the tragic year of 1996 on Everest. And the one thing that was very clear at that time was deciding to go back at the right time is the most important thing in, in mountaineering. And I think that's pretty much the end of this vlog. So we'll see you next week at Postcast from St. Petersburg. <laughs>